Welcome back to Bits Be Trippin'. Now in tonight's episode, we're gonna take 12 MSI twin frozer cards, put those into two separate rigs with some different memory configuration, different types of hard drive, you know, just overall something that's a little different between both rigs, and then see if we can get both to hash exactly the same on two different pulls. This really is targeting, uh, I've seen a lot of comments out there about how various configurations of memory, various hard drive configurations, OS, all of that sort of thing play into the actual hashes that you can get and i'm trying to debunk some of that and show that you can have different setups and hardware and get very consistent results then we're going to come out of that review and go straight into a new section that i'm going to call cryptocurrency of the week we're going to highlight a specific cryptocurrency that we've been hashing with our rigs and why essentially what it's about kind of a quick shout out about them i think you guys will enjoy this segment let us know some feedback on it of what you think about it and then of course to close out the episode i want to answer some very specific questions that have been asked on some of the videos some people asking some different types of questions but we've essentially done a Pareto of all those questions and there are a few out there that need to be answered and I think that we can answer them by adding a small segment at the end of the video to get those answered for you so again welcome this is episode 13 the MSI twin frozer build this is your host Carter let's get into this now first let's break down the separation of these two rigs both of them we know are gonna have six MSI twin frozer 270s these are the non-X cards. They have the single six pin power connector on the top. Both of them are also going to be using the BTC Pro H81 from AS Rock, but the memory configurations are gonna be a little different. One rig will have four gigs of RAM, one rig will have 16 gigs of RAM. Additionally, the rig that has the four gigs of RAM is going to have an old laptop hard drive, a 4200 RPM turd. Why does that matter? Because almost all of our builds have SSD drives and why not have something that's a little different. Additional differences, one will have a 1050 HX power supply from Corsair, the other will have a 1200 watt from Thermal take. Lastly, one will have a G3220 Haswell processor. The other one will have a G1820 processor. Short of that, both will be using CG Miner 3.7.2. Both also will be using the default drivers when you freshly install Windows 8.1. We did not put the Catalyst drivers on here. We let the base drivers install. Had a lot of good success with that. Oh, and before I forget, I want to make sure I cover the risers. The riser situation will be almost exactly the same short of one will have a full 16 by 16 connector riser the other one will be a 16x to a 1x slot in that 16x port now don't worry i'll recover that specifically in the video coming up here uh, and we'll explain that because it was a handful now not much difference to setting this up like our previous episode in episode 12 with the 750 ti build we use a memory stick with windows 8.1 loaded in it we boot directly off uefi load windows 8.1 up once that's loaded and running we go ahead and plug in the network card and let the base drivers for the ati get loaded now that we have both of these built let's go ahead and look at these things hashing now the first rig here we have set the waffle pool and the second rig we have set up to we mine all which is just a spread of different cryptocurrencies two different pools wanted to see if that would have an impact in addition now as we look both of these are started pretty much simultaneously and both coming up exactly the same nearly Thread for thread, these cards are locked in right there at that 2.6, 2.7 as they start to throttle up. Now, another distinct difference is, is on one side of this, we actually have the cards throttled up to full 100% fans, and the other ones we left as auto because we wanted to see the difference in temperature given this, the same spacing on the card. The ambient temperature around here, we're, we're capturing here. It's around 80, 82 degrees, which is pretty warm in here. It's a pretty hot day today. And ultimately, we wanted to see how much the temperature did create a variance now we're gonna go ahead and let these cook for a little bit take about 45 minutes and then come right back to it and then see how much and what they actually lock in at so now as we see here in the video this has been about 45 minutes to about an hour as you can see from the time started versus right now current we're looking right at around 2.813 and 2.815 uh, from both of the rigs which is about as lock solid as you can get and that's showing the consistency of the cards themselves with 
with the settings and how those mash up where you can get pretty close to the same results. I'm actually pretty impressed that we were able to lock these in pretty close to each other. Really the only distinct difference that we can even come up with that is probably causing the small discrepancy that we see between not locking in at 2.815 is the fact that the cards that are a little lower are actually the ones that have the fan set to auto where the other ones are set at 100% and you can see the differences in the heat. The differences on the cards that are running at 100% with the fans down there that 70 low 70 celsius where the other ones were 80 82 83 celsius i mean you had a 10 celsius degree difference there and it really looks like that difference is attributing to the the change in uh, hashes now let's fast forward to now and when i mean now it is march 21st this video was released on march 21st and i'm giving you a picture of this rig right now as this thing is hashing right before this video goes live this thing has not stopped you can see the confirms well up over the 20 million mark and most importantly that locked in hash rate at 2.815 that's a solid rate for these cards right there around that 470 mark very impressed with this rig hope that a few of you guys have out there have been able to make a rig like this that is rock star stable now let's switch gears a bit we get quite a few questions on what do we do with these rigs do we use them to hash for ourselves do we give them away to charity do we sell them somewhere and most of the time i fully disclose we sell them locally we do have quite a few people that follow us locally and wish to purchase them with these last two rigs however we're going to do something a little different we're actually going to post these on ebay and sell these outright to folks that want to buy the actual rigs that were in the episode so it's a little different we'll dress up a nice little ebay page and then we're going to put those up there one dollar no reserve you guys give it a shot i would assume that they're going to go for pretty close to what they're worth um, but you do have some of those folks out there that might run it up a little but give you guys a fair opportunity no reserve we'll put the link down below and you guys could take a shot at getting this rig all right now that we got that squared away let's move on to the next segment now this next new segment is something different this is the segment that we're going to highlight a new cryptocurrency that we are hashing or have had have put some effort into hashing over the last week or so and that cryptocurrency right now is vert coin now vert coin is an algorithm that has been designed to resist the development of custom mining hardware and the multi-fold mining ensuring that transactions are validated by a widely distributed network avoiding the selling pressure when large mining pools indiscriminately flood the market with freshly mined coin now that what that means in layman's terms is the more people that are mining you have a nice distribution now granted they're going to go into pools in general just because you have a better chance at cracking blocks and then sharing in that that effort but ideally it spreads the wealth on the amount of people doing it. Couple that with the fact that the script algorithm itself is designed to be an anti-ASIC. It keeps the GPU miners, the folks that have spent a lot of money in hardware, the stuff that we review almost weekly in the play, you know, playing the game. Obviously, a lot of us have a lot of hardware and money invested in this, and this really facilitates that that resistance of ASIC, big player, big whales, and allows the you know the average Joe to get in and hedge on the cryptocurrency market. We're really excited about this one. I like the concept. You know, the, the total generation looks like around 84 million. VTC will be in total. Block time's about two and a half minutes. Block rewards are 50 coins per block. That halves about every four years. And the difficulty retargets about every block. In closing, for the details of the coin, there was no pre-mine. It was zero. You started from scratch, and that's pretty cool. But the real big point about this coin is, given the adaptive script, the actual hashing on this is a little different. It, it, from what I've seen right now from our rigs, it looks like about half of the power of the rig. If you have a 4.8 mega hash mining rig, you're going to get about 2.2 to 2.4. Uh, this halves the script mining power that you have, which is quite interesting. And to provide you a quick visual of that, here's two Sapphire Toxic R9 280Xs with, you know, the real sweet config that we've been using that's over 800 kilo hash. Here's what they're doing now after a few minutes right there at 400. I mean, it it halves this right away so you're looking at two for about 800 kilo hash go ahead and put your comments below if you're hashing for coin share those sweet configs that you guys got for the different card setups that you have that's a good information that everybody's kind of getting into to help coin grow get some throughput on it 
we get through our little issue that we've had with some thread concurrency on a couple of our rigs we'll get that posted we're having a, a wall with a 8192 thread concurrency once we get through that we'll post that now let's go ahead and switch gears one more time here and just cover a few things that have also came up on the questions below from the various videos one of the questions that i've seen quite a bit is if you're using a 1x to 16x riser is there a problem if you're pulling more than 60 plus watts from it. Uh, we've seen that quite a bit on the, the BTC board and how we use non-powered risers and folks worrying about pulling more than five amps from that. And what we've done here is shown, well, you know, we're doing a temperature test and just seeing if, you know, the, are those cables getting warm? Have we had any issues? We have not had any issues right now with heat or any kind of electrical issues or burnt boards or anything like that right now running non-powered risers with this BTC board. We did, however, have, and you can see here in the video, a cable burn out on us that we did have in the 16x slot and we did plug into a powered riser this is one of the primary reasons why i'm very against the powered risers uh, on the btc board was this was my one experience with a, a cable actually damn near catching fire as you can see in the video here but of course this is the internet and everybody's had some level of experience either way so we have a facebook page get on there get yourself invited to it post those pictures if you've had some issues you know with a different configuration share those and that just makes the whole community stronger so you know post those comments below we'll try to get some more detail out with some of the other questions that we had i just wanted to make sure that we highlighted that one piece from a question powered risers versus the non-powered risers and various experience that we had now in closing we'll take a look at a uh, next couple episodes can't wait to get these to you obviously we have the mineral oil build that we've teased you with a few videos and pictures we were supposed to get it done last week we had some issues and some conflicts come up we weren't able to get to the pour we're looking at the pour this week in and then you'll see it you'll, you'll know it's coming when you see a lot of the pictures flooding on twitter uh so go out there and follow us on twitter take a look at getting informed when we're doing stuff that's where it's going to be then we're coming in with our new rig here that we have built we're calling it the bbt2 this thing is made for a smaller set of cards such as the 750 ti's I'm calling it the blue babe this thing is pretty sweet did a little v type configuration on the cards i think you guys will get a kick out of that and of course with april coming up we're gonna have a new trailer i think you guys are gonna be really excited about this one coming up we're going to have a couple rigs with those r7 265s kind of a 750ti versus the r7 265 i think that'll be pretty cool and then if we can get our hands on it in april we're going to get a couple if not four of those 295 x2s these are the replacements for the 7990s that rig will be friggin sweet i can't wait to get these things to you we're trying to get all this packaged up for the close out of march and then get right into april subscribe let your friends know spread this and we'll bring some great stuff for you guys stay tuned the bits be tripping the bits be tripping